In this video, we're gonna be unboxing and assembling this Ridstar Q20 e-bike that I sourced online. A link to this bike is above and also in the description. Now this bike is outfitted with a 1000 watt rear hub motor and a 48 volt 20 amp hour battery. So let's get into this bike. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, the bike looks well packed here. Here is the accessory box. I can see the tail light. It's nice, it has a little cargo bag and phone holder, which is a nice. I see we have hydraulic brakes down there. That's a good thing. Let's take a look what's in this box. We have the user manual, pedals. Looks like all the tools you're gonna need for this setup, which is nice. The headlight brackets, the headlight, axle cover, and what I would guess would be the charger is in here. Let's take a look at this charger. And the charger is a two amp charger. This is where you may wanna have a friend help you pull the bike out of the box, or you can simply kind of lay it down here. and then slide the bike out yourself. All right. The battery's in the bottom here. I'm gonna unwrap this and get the battery charging. So then when I get this assembled, I'll be ready to go. I got the battery and charger unpacked here and now I'm gonna start the charging process, plug it in. It's nice, it has a battery tester on the top here and an on off switch. I'm gonna start unpacking the bike now that it's out of the box. Before you stand the bike upright, you want to remove the front fender. It's really packaged tough in here. From the rear fender. Set that aside. Just want to be careful not to knock it over. First thing I'm going to do is to straighten this stem cap like this. Slide it around. Use a 4 millimeter hex. You can use this nifty tool. This is great to carry with you inside this bag, but I do have a set of hex wrenches, which is a little bit quicker. You wanna straighten that out as best as you can. You can always adjust this once the bike is assembled. And you're gonna tighten down both sides. Now, you're going to remove the front of the stem with the same four millimeter so that you can install the handlebars. All right, the front of the stem is off to accept the handlebars. I'm now going to lift up the handlebars here, get them situated, make sure your throttle is on this side, and then install this cap. Just take care not to force the threads on and strip it so they go in nice and smoothly. Get that installed and tightened down. You may have to come back and loosen this up to get the handlebars in the right orientation of your liking. But nonetheless, go ahead and tighten those bolts down. Now you're going to take your 3 millimeter wrench and install the screen. Loosen this up. Take note, you don't want to lose the little nuts in the back. I believe you got to remove these because the handlebar is a lot bigger. This is for smaller handlebars, so you're going to slide yeah, the plastic over. So you will have to remove these rubber pieces. Tighten down these little screws from the front here. 
Make sure it's centered over the stem. All right, I got the bike flipped over and I'm gonna install the front fender since it's easy access without the tire on. So I'm going to remove the fender bolt and then I'm gonna just simply slide that on. And most likely you're gonna have to adjust this once the tire is on. Stick the lock nut on the back and tighten that down with a four millimeter. All right, now we're gonna move up and we're gonna take off the shipping axle using the 17 millimeter. Just gonna loosen that up and that slides right off. Set that aside. Now you're gonna bring up your tire, make sure your rotor is on this side and you're gonna remove the hardware on each side. You could see this. There is a nut, a lock washer, and then a tab washer. The tab washer is going to locate on the outside here in this slot so that it won't uh, loosen up as you're riding. Loosen both sides here. Now line your rotor up, get it aligned into the brake, bend the fender. All right, you wanna make sure that it's free flowing. It's rubbing a little bit on the brake, but not too bad. We can always adjust the brake caliper. So then what you're gonna to wanna to do is put on that tab washer, then the serrated lock washer, and a nut. And you're gonna do that for both sides. And you're just gonna tighten down each side using the 15 millimeter wrench. Since that brake caliper is rubbing, what I'm gonna do is come in here. What you can see is I can loosen it. Now it doesn't rub at all. In order to center it, what you can do is have someone hold the brake, front brake down so it squeezes the caliper and then tighten those bolts down. So I'm squeezing this down. Then I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna tighten this up. While I have the bike in a good position, I'm gonna install the pedals. I have a right pedal here. It goes on this side and you can use the 15 millimeter wrench. This is reverse thread. All right, the keys for the bike are right here on the handlebars. So the one key is for the ignition, the other key is for the battery lock onto the frame. We're gonna install this little rubber cap that was in the box on this side, just gives a little protection. Right, we're gonna install the headlight. First thing we're gonna do is take these bump stops and you're gonna rotate them in. This prevents the handlebars from going too far and the headlight mounts from crashing in and scratching the frame. So you wanna make sure those are located in a nice safe position so it acts like a bumper or stopper and now we're going to install these headlight brackets you're going to need the 10 millimeter socket phillips head screwdriver what you're going to do is you're going to take these little pads that came in the box let's go on the larger bracket and then there's smaller ones for the other side and then the smaller pad goes on the smaller piece right here like that and then what you're going to do is simply slide it in the, the second notch in like that and you're going to wrap it around now you can mount the headlight high or low depending on your preference whichever one and then what you're going to do is the bolt nut the nut goes on the inside and you're going to tighten that down and do the same for the other side all right, I got the brackets mounted. I decided to put the rubber bumpers on top. And now I'm going to loosen the bolts from the headlight. You're gonna make sure this is down. You can plug it into this connector. Make sure the tabs line up. Like that. What you need to do is put the rubber washer between the bracket. 
I left these brackets a little loose. So I'm putting that in there like this. Then I'm threading that bolt on and I'm going to do the same for the other side, the rubber washer between the metal and the headlight. Now I'm going to just tighten everything down. You can use this 15 millimeter wrench. The bike is done. I'm going to let the battery finish charging. I'm also going to adjust the handlebars to my liking. I'm going to do that now. Going to be checking the air pressure. The front tire needed some air. So I'm going to inflate that to 18 PSI. Max pressure is 20. All right, I got the handlebars adjusted. The brakes rolled down, the gear shifter. And now the last thing I'm going to do is just with the 15 millimeter wrench, I'm just going to double check the axle on both sides tighten that down these are great tools to keep with you I like that they have this little bag here so I'm going to keep these in the bag so if I'm out on a ride and anything loosens up I can then use those tools to install the battery simply slide it in the frame latch it down then you're gonna lock it in place all right, I'm going to turn the battery on, the key ignition over here. You can see here that the standard is in kilometers. I'm going to show you how to change that to miles per hour, and we'll also unlock this bike so that the top speed is not limited. Right, to jump into the control settings, what you want to do is hold the plus and minus button for the speed, and then you're going to come in here and you're going to see P01. I'm going to leave that as the default. That's the screen brightness. I'm going to leave it at 2. Then you're going to use the power button to go to the different settings. P02 is kilometers versus miles per hour. So the default is kilometers and 1 is miles per hour. Yes, so now the display is miles per hour and the odometer is in miles. So the jump back into the menu, I'm going to do, hold the plus and minus. And then what I'm going to do is cycle through. That's P03 is the voltage. P04 is the screen dormancy when it goes to sleep. I'm not sure what P5 is. What I want to do, I'm going to leave that as the default. P6, P7. Okay, this is the speed limit in kilometers per hour. So P08 is set to 100. Get to P14. That's the amps that the controller outputs, and I want to make sure that's set to the max possible. All right, I'm in P14, and what I want to do is raise this to the max that it can go. That's what's going to limit your output. The default was 15, so that will give me the max speed. What you're going to see here is I'm going to go through the different settings. You're going to see I'm going to lift up the bike. So that's pedal assist one mode with the throttle. I'm going to increase that. That's two. Get three, four, five, it says it does 32, obviously there's no resistance, but nice with the hydraulic brakes. I'm going to go out and do a test drive and see how it does.